to do that. You know what how to do to means? In country speak, that's how do you do. It's going to be a hot one today. It's going to be 92 or, or thereabouts. You want to be finding the swimming hole, a nice big tree to sit under, or just a nice old shed to do your work like I'm doing. Well, you know what I've been doing the last couple weeks? Building doors. I've been calling this my door factory. I got some old doors in my house called Luan doors. They be kind of lightweight like this. They're just, they're not original to the house. They're lightweight. They're kind of not so great. So, I'm going to make some solid doors here. I'm just in the process of varnishing these. And, um, I've been making some stain. You know why we stain doors? That's right. Bring out the grain and the natural beauty. Now, I went to the store and I got a bunch of different stains Then and then I didn't like it. Take another one back, <clears throat> get another one, and still I didn't like it. I'm kind of particular with my stains, so I mix my own color. Let me show you how I did that. Hey, over here being the stains that I use, uh, I had all kinds of mixes. I bought this Itchy Pick Pine in natural color and uh, Providential was too dark. This was too reddish. I wasn't happy with most of these. I tested them out. They were really brown. Just, there was no color that just did it for me. I wanted something just kind of natural. And a lot of these were just like too yellow too too red, too brown, just too everything but really natural. So I got at it and I this one color was real too reddish to even use. But I mixed these four colors together in the right proportion and made my own little batch. Now it took longer but I was more happy with the finished result. Now in talking with Eddie, Eddie says that painting good bit the same way. He said kids are all the time grabbing up a brown and coloring the tree brown. But he says what they should do is look and see if there's any undertones, any other colors. Like is the brown a reddish brown? Is it a yellowish brown? Uh, I don't know what other kind of brown there are, but he, he, he said you couldn't mix the colors. He also said that if you're painting like a sunset, and the sun sets a pretty red and orange. That red and orange reflects down in the water. Rather than the water being blue, now it's red and orange. And if you, you got that little bit of red, you got like light hit inside the tree, inside the barn, it's got a little reddish orange in it too. So ain't that, or a moonlit night, he said. You know, you want a spooky looking thing? Say, well, you gotta cast a blue glow over it tombstones and over the grass and so now the leaves and the tree become blue green so you gotta you gotta think about using these things natural like and, and just mixing things you know just taking something straight out of a can get you something looks like it's straight out of a can now I did a little bit of philosophizing while I was looking at this wood I found some right interesting things in trees. One of the things I learned about trees is that no two trees be alike. Wood grain different in every one. Every tree tells a different story. Every wood grain tells you something different about the life that that tree led. Did it have a good life? Did it have a hard life? And in this tree you can see some hardship. Right down here we see Oh boy, big old limb came out of here, big old rot spot here. But here's beautiful grain coming up in here real close to where that rot be. And I got to thinking about it, you know. Every tree in the forest has the same rain fall on it. Every tree in this forest had the same winds hitting on it. And each tree had to decide how to handle that. Now... I also noticed that the, the the hard spots, this little rotten spot is where a limb was. Now some trees handled that, let the water come in, let it rot at them, and they didn't handle it very well. 
But then other trees or other portions of their life, they handle the same difficulty really well. These little lines coming down like this, they'd be pressure from a limb. And it makes that beautiful sort of marbled looking grain. And they handled the pressure well. And it led to this beautiful thing. But in other times, they didn't handle the pressure well. They let the water and the rot and the cares get in and cause problems. Here, here's another. This board here, this had some beautiful grain in it. But they let this big old hole and rot. So I had to cut this piece out and toss it out. So I bet you can kind of figure out what I'm saying about people. Here be the final product, natural doors in place, nice old fashioned latches. And this is what, what she looked like on the outside. Well, well hello, how are you? You, you, you got out to uh, Bernie's place the other day, right? How? Yes. Again. The door factory. Oh, yes. That's right. I remember he was telling me about it. He said that he made an art connection for you. He said that um, he showed you how he mixed color. He had to use so many different cans of dye, of stain. He didn't like any of them, so he had to mix his own. Yes. That's what I've been kind of thinking about. I think I should show you how to mix your own color because if you rely on just these simple little colors in the pack, you know, it's a straight orange. Most things in nature aren't just straight orange. They are mix of so many things. They so I'm going to show you some color mixing. Let me adjust my light and we'll get right to work. Don't want to blind don't want to blind you. Yes. Okay, well um I have the perfect example. This this little book here was done by Bill Pete, Kermit the Hermit. And my mother, she used to read me these stories by Bill Pete when I was a wee tad. And it would be windy and cold outside. I would be frightened by the noises that go go thump and bump in the night. She would read these books to me and it would be peaceful for me. Just show you an example of what this book is like. Here is Kermit the Hermit. He's living in his cave and he's got all this collection of things. Now while we're here notice all the amazing colors he has mixed in here. The colors are just beautiful. Here this is not just the purple but it is a mix of red and blue. This orange is not just an orange. It is yellow and orange and maybe some browns. These colors are just mixed so nicely. Now Kermit, he's a, he's a hermit. He takes everything. Well, one day he goes on a big adventure and he sees this pirate ship. You can see him sinking down right here. And in the pirate ship, he finds, you guessed it, gold. And he starts to take the gold and he takes it back to his little cave. But he has to get by all the fishies that want to eat him. There he is. He is scared. There's the big fishies. Look at that color mixing. And oh, he gets it all back to his cave and he is happy. Now, he had a friend who saved his life, a little boy that rescued him from a dog, a mean dog. So he takes and he gives his treasure to the little boy because he finds out where the little boy lives. 
and their family is so amazed. Right there they are, they're looking up in the sky. How did that gold get in our house? And so it has a very happy ending, a good moral. So, um, but I want to focus specifically on the colors they mix. Like we said, I'm going to demonstrate a little color mixing right in here. I want you to notice the ocean water is a nice mix of yellow for the sand and blue for the water. Gives it that murkiness. And he also has black put down first. So let me demonstrate. This is a very easy one. Not too much mixing. And we are going to zoom us in here. Try to get about as close to the drawing as we can. And I think that's about all I can do. Now, I have selected... Um, see here I did a practice on the sand. And what we need to do with that is we start with, as you see up here, number one, I says values. You want to start with value. That's black and white. You put them down first. Now, if I'm going to do sand, I have to say, this is my little sandbar here. There's going to be a little treasure chest coming up right in here. And this sandbar is going to be darker on the other side of the sandbar. And then we maybe have some little shadows down here toward the bottom of this. And we put that in. Figure out if you want something much darker. You can always make it darker as you go. There's your values. Now I think the next best thing to do is put in the yellow for the sand. We're not going to put it down solid, but just lightly kind of mix it in just like this. Nice, yes. Um, you're probably having trouble seeing. It's very, very dim. Very, very dim. Let me, it's about as close as I can get. Now, next I'm going to put in some light blue to see if I can get this water type quality. A kind of blurring across this. Just like this. No one area is too much one color or the other gives it kind of a nice murkiness that um, just some richness now the next piece I want that kind of wraps that one up here I did a little boot you can't see it closely but from a distance the boot just looks brown but up close you see that there are uh, many uh, different colors in there I want to do this log here and I'm going to show you which Bill Peet picture it's based on. And here's the log. We are going to draw this log. And if you can see it up here real closely, you can see the beautiful blues, purples, and reds that are in this log. Before we do any of that, we're going to put the value down. See this dark underside of this and the dark hull? Well, this is drawn in pen first. And so that's what I've prepped. Right here you see the log drawn in pen. I did pencil first, then pen. And uh, let me find my colors. Here we are. We've got purple, red, blue, and uh, black. So the first thing we want to do is value. I have that listed here, value. So we are going to take and worry about where is the sun, where well, the sun is above it. And we're going to put a little bit of black shading down toward the underside of this so that when we put the color on, it is that much more beautiful. Yes, like that. Good. Next, what we want to do is put in what is the overall color of the log. If you think about what's the overall color, I would have to say purple. So I'm going to put a light touch of purple over the log, just leaving the lightest areas white because I want there to be lots of contrast. And when you get rid of your white, you will have no contrast. So here we go, lots and lots of white, lots and lots of purple coming up to the edge of the brightest spots. 
don't know how well you can see my log, but you can maybe see just the touches of purple that I've put in there. Now next, what I want to do is put in the reds. And <coughs> the reds are a warm color. Okay, and if you see over here, I listed, and it all looks backwards. After you put in your values, you want to put in your uh, overall color, which was the purple. Then you want to put in the mixed colors, and you want to think about which are warm and which colors are cold. Well, this warm color, being red, it's going to go more up toward the sun. It's going to be mixed in a little bit everywhere, but especially toward the upper part of the log kind of like this. You can see the touches of red going in in places. Now, I'm ready for my cool color, which of course is blue. And the cool color should go in on the shadow side, the underside, a little bit more there, because that makes it look cold. Makes it look cold, kind of like this. A little bit of touches of blue up higher, but for the most part, it is going to be and in the log. Oh, see, a little bit of dark blue in the log makes it look cold. A little cold blue maybe on the sand, just touches of that. And here we see our log is just much more colorful than it would be otherwise. It's not a boring gray. It is an exciting. An exciting purple um, with with all these other colors coming in so that's just a little bit about color mixing that should help you when you go to use colored pencils um, and and you can uh, don't forget the order is put the values down first after you've drawn it the black area is shaded in white of the paper for whites main colors next uh, like the overall color was purple and then the hot and cold colors hot where it's warm and cold where it's a little cooler so I hope that helped and maybe we can be like Bernie and make our own colors yes <laughs> <laughs>